The African theater of World War I describes campaigns in North Africa instigated by the German and Ottoman empires, local rebellions against European colonial rule and allied campaigns against the German colonies of Cameroon, Togoland, German Southwest Africa and German East Africa which were fought by German Schutztruppe, local resistance movements and forces of the British Empire. France, Belgium and Portugal. Background. Strategic situation German colonies in Africa had been acquired in the 1880s and were not well defended. They were also surrounded by territories controlled by Britain, France, Belgium and Portugal. Colonial military forces in Africa were relatively small, poorly equipped and had been created to maintain internal order, rather than conduct military operations against other colonial forces. Most of the European warfare in Africa during the 19th century had been conducted against African societies to enslave people and later to conquer territory. The Berlin Conference of 1884 had provided for European colonies in Africa to be neutral. If war broke out in Europe in 1914 none of the European powers had plans to challenge their opponents for control of overseas colonies. When news of the outbreak of war reached European colonialists in Africa, it was met by little of the enthusiasm seen in the capital cities of the states which maintained colonies. An editorial in the East African Standard on the 22nd of August argued that Europeans in Africa should not fight each other but instead collaborate to maintain the repression of the indigenous population. War was against the interest of the white colonialists because they were small in number. Many of the European conquests were recent, unstable and operated through existing local structures of power and the organization of African economic potential for European profit had only recently begun. In Britain, an offensive subcommittee of the Committee of Imperial Defence was appointed on 5 August and established a principle that command of the seas was to be ensured and that objectives were considered only if they could be attained with local forces and if the objective assisted the priority of maintaining British sea communications. As British army garrisons abroad were returned to Europe in imperial concentration, attacks on German coaling stations and wireless stations were considered to be important to clear the seas of German commerce raiders. Objectives at Tower in the Far East and Ludritz Bay, Windhoek, Douala and Dar es Salaam in Africa and a German wireless station in Togoland, next to the British colony of Gold Coast in the Gulf of Guinea, were considered vulnerable to attack by local or allied forces. North Africa, Zayan War, 1914-1921 The Zayan War was fought between France and the Zayan Confederation of Berber tribes in Morocco between 1914 and 1921. Morocco had become a French protectorate in 1912 and the French army extended French influence eastwards through the Middle Atlas Mountains towards French Algeria. The Zayans, led by Muhar Ahamor Zayani, quickly lost the towns of Tazar and Kenifra but managed to inflict many casualties on the French, who responded by establishing groups mobiles, combined arms formations that mixed regular and irregular infantry, cavalry and artillery. By 1914 the French had 80,000 troops in Morocco. Two-thirds of the French troops were withdrawn from 1914-1915 for service in France and more than 600 French soldiers were killed at the Battle of Vel, Herrera on 13 November 1914. Lyotis, the French governor, reorganized his forces and pursued a forward policy rather than passive defense. The French retained most of their territory despite intelligence and financial support provided by the Central Powers to the Zayan Confederation and raids which caused losses to the French when already short of manpower. Senussa Campaign, 1915-1917 Coastal Campaign, 1915-1916 On 6 November, the German submarine U-35 torpedoed and sank a steamer HMS Tara in the Bay of Solemn. 
U-35 surfaced, sank the Coast Guard gunboat Abbas and badly damaged NURL bar with its deck gun. On 14 November the Sanasi attacked an Egyptian position at Solom and on the night of 17 November, a party of Sanasi fired into Solom, as another party cut the coast telegraph line. Next night a monastery at Sidi Barani, 48 miles beyond Solom was occupied by 300 Mahafiti Aram on the night of 19 November. A coast guard was killed. An Egyptian post was attacked 30 miles east of Solom on 20 November. The British withdrew from Solom to Masor Matru, 120 miles further east which had better facilities for a base and the Western Frontier Force was created. On the 11th of December, a British column sent to do Hussein was attacked along the Matru Solemn track and in the affair of Wadi Senbar, drove the Senussa out of the Wadi. The reconnaissance continued and on the 13th of December at Wadi Hashiviat, the British were attacked again and held up until artillery came into action in the afternoon and forced the Sanasi to retreat. The British returned to Matru until 25 December and then made a night advance to surprise the Sanasi. At the affair of Wadi Majid, the Sanasi were defeated but were able to withdraw to the west. Air reconnaissance found more Senussa encampments in the vicinity of Matru at Halazine, which was attacked on 23 January. In the affair of Halazine, the Senussa fell back skillfully and then attempted to envelop the British flanks. The British were pushed back on the flanks as the centre advanced and defeated the main body of Senussa, who were again able to withdraw. In February 1916, the Western Frontier Force was reinforced and a British column was sent west along the coast to recapture Solom. Air reconnaissance discovered a Senussa encampment at Agaja, which was attacked in the action of Agaja on 26 February. The Senussa were defeated and then intercepted by the Dorset Yeomanry as they withdrew. The Yeomanry charged across open ground swept by machine gun and rifle fire. The British lost half their horses and 58 of 184 men but prevented the Senussa from slipping away. Jafar Pasha, the commander of the Senussa forces on the coast, was captured and Solom was reoccupied by British forces on 14 March 1916, which concluded the coastal campaign. Band of Oases Campaign 1916-1917 On the 11th of February 1916 Ahmed Sharif Senussa, leader of the Senussa Order in Cyrenaica, occupied the oasis at Bahariya, which was then bombed by British aircraft. The oasis at Farafre was occupied at the same time and then the Senussa moved on to the oasis at Dakhla on the 27th of February. The British responded by forming the southern force at Beni Souf. Egyptian officials at Karga were withdrawn and the oasis was occupied by the Senussa until they withdrew without being attacked. The British reoccupied the oasis on 15 April and began to extend the light railway terminus at Karga to the Mofara oasis. The mainly Australian Imperial Camel Corps patrolled on camels and in light Ford cars to cut off the Senussa from the Nile Valley. Preparations to attack the oasis at Bahariya were detected by the Senussa garrison, which withdrew to SIWA in early October. The southern force attacked the Senussa in the affairs in the Dakla oasis after which the Senussa retreated to their base at SIWA. In January 1917, a British column including the Light Armoured Car Brigade with Rolls-Royce Armoured Cars and three light car patrols was dispatched to SIWA. On 3 February the armoured cars surprised and engaged the Senussa at Gerbar, who retreated overnight. SIWA was entered on 4 February without opposition but a British ambush party at the Munasi Pass was foiled, when the escarpment was found to be too steep for the armoured cars. The light cars managed to descend the escarpment and captured a convoy on 4 February. Next day the Senussa from Gerbar were intercepted but managed to establish a post the cars were unable to reach and then warned the rest of the Senussa. The British force returned to Matru on 8 February and Saeed Ahmed withdrew to Jabab. 
Negotiations between Syed Idris and the Anglo-Italians which had begun in late January, were galvanized by news of the Sanusa defeat at SIWA. At Akrama on 12 April, Idris accepted the British terms and those of Italy on 14 April. Darfur Expedition, 1916 On 1 March 1916 hostilities began between the Sudanese government and the Sultan of Darfur. The Anglo-Egyptian Darfur Expedition was conducted to forestall an imagined invasion of Sudan and Egypt by the Darfurian leader, Sultan Ali Dina, which was believed to have been synchronized with the Sanasi advance into Egypt from the west. The Sudar of the Egyptian army organized a force of c. 2,000 men at Rahad, a railhead 200 miles east of the Darfur frontier. On 16 March, the force crossed the frontier mounted in lorries from a forward base established at Nahud, 90 miles from the border, with the support of four aircraft. By May the force was close to the Darfur capital of El Fasha. At the affair of Bering year on the 22nd of May, the Fur army was defeated and the Anglo-Egyptian force captured the capital the next day. Dinar and 2,000 followers had left before their arrival and as they moved south were bombed from the air. French troops in Chad who had returned from the Cameroon campaign prevented a Darfurian withdrawal westwards. Dinar withdrew into the Mara Mountains 50 miles south of El Fasha and sent envoys to discuss terms but the British believed he was prevaricating, and ended the talks on 1 August. Internal dissension reduced the force with Dinar to see. 1,000 men and Anglo-Egyptian outposts were pushed out from El Fasha to the west and southwest after the August rains. A skirmish took place at Dibus on 13 October and Dina opened negotiations but was again suspected of bad faith. Dina fled southwest to Gaiba and a small force was sent in pursuit. At dawn on 6 November the Anglo-Egyptians attacked in the affair of Gaiba and Dina's remaining followers scattered. The body of the Sultan was found one mile from the camp. After the expedition, Darfur was incorporated into Sudan. KSN Revolt 1916-1917 Ag Mohamed War Tegwid a KSN the Amino Kul of the Akaj Kazan Tuareg Confederation had attacked French colonial forces from 1909. The Sanasaya leadership in the Fezzan oasis town of Kufra declared jihad against the French colonialists in October 1914. The Sultan of Agades convinced the French that the Tuareg confederations remained loyal and KSN's forces besieged the garrison on 17 December, 1916. KSN, his brother Mokhtar Kodogo and C. 1000 Tuareg raiders, armed with rifles and a field gun captured from the Italians in Libya, defeated several French relief columns. The Tuareg seized the main towns of the air, including Ingol, Isode and Auderas. Modern northern Niger came under rebel control for over three months. On 3 March 1917, a large French force from Zinda relieved the Agades garrison and began to recapture the towns. Mass reprisals were taken against the town populations, especially against marabouts, though many were neither Tuareg or rebels. The French summarily killed 130 people in public in Agades and Ingol. KSN fled north and was killed in 1919 by local forces in Morzouk. KSN's brother was killed by the French in 1920 after a revolt he led amongst the Tubu and Fuller in the Sultanate of Damagara and was defeated. Somaliland Campaign, 1900-1920 West Africa Togoland Campaign, 1914 The Togoland Campaign was a French and British invasion of the German colony of Togoland in West Africa. During the First World War, the colony was invaded on 6 August by French forces from Dahomey to the east and on 9 August by British forces from Gold Coast to the west. German colonial forces withdrew from the capital Lomiacute and the coastal province and then fought delaying actions on the route north to Kamina. 
where a new wireless station linked Berlin to Togoland, the Atlantic and South America. The main British and French force from the neighbouring colonies of Gold Coast and Dahomey advanced from the coast up the road and railway. As smaller forces converged on Kamina from the north, the German defenders were able to delay the invaders for several days at the battles of Buffalo, Agbaluvo and Chra but surrendered the colony on 26 August 1914. In 1916, Togoland was partitioned by the victors and in July 1922, British Togoland and French Togoland were created as League of Nations mandates. The French acquisition consisted of c. 60% of the colony, including the coast. The British received the smaller, less populated and less developed portion of Togoland to the west. The surrender of Togoland marked the beginning of the end for the German colonial empire in Africa. Cameroon Campaign, 1914-1916 By 25 August 1914, British forces in Nigeria had moved into Cameroon towards Mara in the far north, towards Garoa in the centre and towards Nsanakang in the south. British forces moving towards Garua under the command of Colonel MacLear were ordered to push to the German border post at Tipani Garua. The first engagement between British and German troops in the campaign took place at the Battle of Tipa, eventually resulting in German withdrawal. In the far north British forces attempted to take the German fort at Mora but failed and began a siege which lasted until the end of the campaign. British forces in the south attacked Ten Sanakang and were defeated and almost completely destroyed by German counter-attacks at the Battle of N. Sanakong. MacLear then pushed his forces further inland towards the German stronghold of Garua, but was repulsed in the First Battle of Garua on 31 August. In 1915 the German forces, except for those at Mora and Garua, withdrew to the mountains near the new capital of Jorda. In the spring the German forces delayed or repulsed Allied attacks and a force under Captain von Kralsheim from Garua, conducted an offensive into Nigeria and fought the Battle of Gurin. General Frederick Hugh Cunliffe began the Second Battle of Garua in June, which was a British victory. Allied units in northern Cameroon were freed to push into the interior, where the Germans were defeated at the Battle of Noundra on 29 June. Cunliffe advanced south to Jaunda but was held up by heavy rains and his force joined the Siege of Mora. When the weather improved, Cunliffe moved further south captured a German fort of the Battle of Banjo on 6 November and occupied several towns by the end of the year. In December, the forces of Cunliffe and Dobell made contact and made ready to conduct an assault on Jaunda. In this year most of Neu Cameroon had been fully occupied by Belgian and French troops, who also began to prepare for an attack on Jaunda. German forces began to cross into the Spanish colony of Rio Muni on 23 December 1915 and with Allied forces pressing in on Jaunda from all sides. The German commander Karl Zimmermann ordered the remaining German units and civilians to escape into Rio Muni and by mid-February, 7,000 Schutztruppen and c. 7,000 civilians had reached Spanish territory. On 18 February the siege of Mora ended with the surrender of the garrison. Most Cameroonians remained in Muni but the Germans eventually moved to Fernando Po and some were allowed by Spain to travel to the Netherlands to go home. Some Cameroonians including the paramount chief of the Betty people moved to Madrid where they lived as visiting nobility on German funds.